Okay, uh, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, which begins with the 144,000. All praises and glories due to Yahweh Barshem Yahweh Shab, Barshem Rakakwadash, for giving us the understanding of this Bible. Hopefully, this video will be edifying and exhorting to you, brothers and your sisters out there that believe in, in this knowledge, in this truth. So, what you're looking at is a still of uh, our camp yesterday, our street ministry, uh, myself and Elder Apostle Tal, and um, among the many topics we discussed was, uh, uh, I had made a statement uh, pursuant to the book of uh, John, the eighth chapter, in particular, the 23rd verse when Yahweh said to the wicked Pharisees and Sadducees, which he was debating with them, he said to them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. And that was Yahweh speaking. And when I said that, El Pastor, you know, he he uh, he jumped on that statement that Yahweh made, and then he, he made a statement. I, I can't remember exactly what he said, but he said, um, Elder Pastor said that would be a good topic to do a video, John the eighth chapter. Now, uh, in looking over John the eighth chapter, I mean most of it is is pretty. Ex it's it's not like it's a uh, any hidden mysteries in there, so to speak, any deep dark parables or deep dark sayings which needs uh, you know interpretation. Most of it is uh, Yahweh Shai debating the wicked Pharisees and Sadducees that didn't believe in him. When I say believe in him, uh, believing that he was the one that the Heavenly Father chose to be the savior of the nation of Israel. Also that the only way the nation of Israel, the only way their sins could be forgiven was through him, through Yahweh Shai. You had the wicked Pharisees and Sadducees that... Um, that didn't believe that. They didn't believe that their sins could be forgiven through Yahweh Shai. They believed that their sins could be forgiven by the Heavenly Father through the laws, statutes, and commandments, which a lot of them was hypocrites anyway. They, they really weren't uh, keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments uh, the, the way they taught the people. You know, This is why Yahweh Shai made a statement. He, he, he said, let me see if I can find that scripture. Okay, I know it goes, do as they say, do as they, do as they say. Yeah, there you go. All right, so it's in Matthew, the 23rd chapter, uh, the third verse. So what we're going to do is, I'll bring my second Bible. Uh which contains the Apocrypha in it. We're going to go to the book of Matthew. Now, this proves my point, the point I just made. Uh, the wicked Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes, and not all the Pharisees were wicked. All right. The majority, of, a good majority of them were, but not all of them were wicked. You had Pharisees that actually believed in Yahweh Shai. Uh, a Pharisee was an office at that time in Israel. They were like your... Your, your lawyers, your, like your modern day lawyers today, those would be your Pharisees back then. That's why you had the Pharisees. They were like doctors of the law. Case in point, uh, Apostle Paul. Okay, he, he, was, he called himself a Pharisee of the Pharisees. Okay, you, you still got Israelites to this very day that don't understand the term Pharisee. As soon as they hear the term Pharisee, they immediately they lump, lump them all as being wicked. I dare say they they don't even know what the office of a Pharisee consisted of. All right. The Pharisees were supposed to be the experts in the law, the law that was given to us by um, uh, the Heavenly Father through Moses, which at that time Moses was the mediator, right, between us and the nation of Israel. So the Pharisees were supposed to be experts in the law. So they believed, the wicked ones, they believed that they could that they could attain forgiveness 
from the Heavenly Father through the laws, statutes, commandments, and not through Yahweh Shai. But what they didn't realize is the Heavenly Father Yahweh set up Yahweh Shai to be the uh, one to forgive our sins. In other words, our sins cannot be forgiven unless we go through Yahweh Shai. And still to this very day, you got certain Israelites that uh, don't believe that. Okay, they don't believe that uh, you have to go through Yahweh Shai to have your sins for be forgiven. All right? That's in these uh, other Israelite groups. Okay, they, they still believe in the laws, statutes, and commandments. And this is what the Apostle Paul said when he, when he made that statement, for they stumble at that stumbling stone. What was that stumbling stone? Believing that you can attain perfection through the law. No, you attain perfection as a Hebrew Israelite through Yahweh Shai. There's no other way. Yahweh Shai said it best. He said, no man can come unto the Father but, but through me. That's what Yahweh Shai said. So Yahweh Shai is the uh, image of salvation. His very name, Yahweh Shai, means he is, the he is the deliverer. He is salvation. Okay? So that's what the argument in John the 8th chapter was really all about. Yahweh Shai was trying to tell the wicked Pharisees and Sadducees, I'm that guy. I'm the guy that the Heavenly Father Yahweh has set up to be the salvation of this nation. And they weren't trying to hear it. And a lot of them were hypocrites. This is why, let's go to the scripture now. Matthew 23. Let's see, Matthew 23 and 3. So like I said, Elder Pastor said that it would be a good uh, topic for a lesson. John the 8th chapter. Now, John the 8th chapter is a pretty big chapter. Because I kind of looked, scanned over it. It's like, what, 59 verses? So I'm just going to... Pick it up from uh, verse 23, not verse 23, I'm sorry, verse 21. And then I'll see how far the Holy Spirit will, will bring me. But you brothers out there, you can, if you want, there's a project for you. You can go through the whole book of uh, John, the eighth chapter, you studious brothers out there. You know, if the, if the Holy Spirit hits you to do that. Anyway, Matthew, the 23rd chapter. It says, Then spake Yahweh Shai to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Now, what was Moses? Moses was also known as a lawgiver. So that's what I mean. They, they, their job was to, the office of a Pharisee, also a scribe. Then you had the actual lawyers. Their job was to, was to mete out the law that was given to us by the Heavenly Father. Okay? Through Moses, they were supposed to be experts of the law, the Pharisees and uh, the scribes, the lawyers, right? But many of them were corrupt. That's the point. Uh, reading on, it says, all therefore whatsoever they bid you observe. Yeah, because they were experts of the law. That observe and do, but do not after their works, for they say, and do not. So they were what? They were a lot of them were hypocrites. That's why Howard Shai made that statement. By the way, it was the is the it was the chief priests, the wicked Pharisees, the chief priests, the scribes, the lawyers. They had a heavy hand in in ultimately bringing Howard Shai to uh, to uh, um, to be crucified on the cross. You know, they had a heavy hand in that, and the scriptures tell us that. Okay. Matter of fact, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, let's get that real quick. Uh, that would be in. Uh, matter of fact, you know what? Let me do this. Betray your master with a kiss. Betray your. Yeah. Master, oh. it should take us right to where I need to be. Yeah, okay, Luke 22 and 48. Because that's what Judas Iscariot did. He was in the Garden of Gethsemane. He actually led the, uh, well, let's just read it. Let's just read it. Luke 22 and 48. Let's go there. Luke twenty two forty eight. 
Now there's one scripture where it, it let me see if this is the one. Luke 22 and uh, 44. And being in agony, it's talking about Yahweh Shai, he prayed more earnestly and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow and said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. And while he yet spake, behold, a multitude, and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near unto Yahweh to kiss him. Now, within that multitude you had wicked Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes, lawyers, who hated Yahweh Shai. Okay? So Judas Iscariot led them to where Yahweh Shai was right after the Passover. Because right after the Passover, Yahweh Shai and his disciples went to the Garden of Gethsemane, minus Judas Iscariot, of course. By that time, Judas had left to go and betray Yahweh Shai. The, the example of betrayal was they, he, uh, Judas Iscariot led the wicked Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes, chief priests, he led them to the Garden of Gethsemane to arrest Yahweh Shai. And later Yahweh Shai would be put on trial before them and then crucified, you know, put on the cross. But the key word there is multitude. Now there's another scripture where it, it, uh, it, um, it goes more in depth. I got to find that one. That's the one I really want. Judas led a multitude. Okay, this might be it. Matthew 26 and 47. Let's try that one. Matthew 26, 47. Let's start at 45. Now, pretty much this is the same thing that um, the previous scripture we read. The account was in Luke. Now, this time, this account is in Matthew. Uh, Matthew 26 and 41. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went, he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them sleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hand of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. Now, okay, this is it. This is the one I want. The one in Luke was good, but this is this one gets more explicit because the one in Luke said a, a great multitude came to arrest Yahweh Shai. But in this account, it, it gives you it gets more in depth. You know, that's that's the, the beautiful thing about the different gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. What is not ex explicitly explained in Luke could be explicitly explained, ex explained, explicitly explained in, in Matthew or in John or, or, um, or in Mark, okay? You had the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So Matthew 26 and 46, rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. 
And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and elders of the people. And you better believe among that multitude, even though it doesn't say it, we can only uh, speculate and extrapolate. It had to be wicked Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes, the ones who hated Yahweh, who, who would not accept him as, as being the savior of the nation of Israel. There's even a scripture where it said uh, uh, the wicked Pharisees, Sadducees, Sadducees and scribes, they were jealous of Yahweh. There's a scripture. Uh, let me let me uh, let me show you for jealousy. Matter of fact, this time let's go to the blue letter. I know the, I know the words for jealousy. That's one of the reasons why they gave him up, because they were jealous of him, of his position. They knew they knew deep down in their heart of hearts, the wicked Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes. They knew that he was the man. They knew that. Because there's a scripture where it says no one ever spake like that man, Yahweh Shai. The way he taught, the words that he said, the wisdom that he had could not be denied. But for jealousy, they didn't want to accept him. They were jealous of him. I'm going to read you the scripture. <clears throat> Pontius Pilate kind of. Pontius Pilate kind of, Pontius Pilate, he was a perceptive guy, so he kind of figured out that, oh, they're bringing this man to me because they're jealous of him. I got to find the scripture. Uh, for jealousy. Oh, okay, for envy, okay, this this is, uh, yeah, there we go, Matthew 27, which envy and jealousy is the same thing, Matthew 27 and 18, Matthew 27, the book of Matthew 27, it's 27 chapter, the 18th verse, you know what, where should I start here? Yeah, let me start the 15th verse. Matthew 27, 15. Now at the feast, now at that feast, the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would, which was a custom back then. And they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas, which he was a murderer and a thief. Okay, this Barabbas character, a real low life. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Yahweh Shai, which is called the Anointed? All right? For he knew, see, here's the proof, uh, Pilate. For he knew, because he was a perceptive guy, he knew that for envy they had delivered him. Yeah. So they were jealous of Yahweh Shai, the, the, the top wicked Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes, the top lawyers. They knew he was the guy. They knew he was the one the Heavenly Father had chosen. They, knew, they even knew that he was the one sp spoken of in the Old Testament. All right? Spoken of in the Old Testament, I should have. Put this thing on uh, Do Not Disturb. I always forget to do that. Right? They, they knew he was the one spoken of in the Old Testament by the prophets. They knew. But again, like it says here, Matthew 20, they, they, why do you think they were jealous of him? You know, you know, they would say, oh, he's probably that guy that Isaiah wrote about and this prophet wrote about it, but I, I don't want to accept it. I just don't like him. Ah, that's what, hey, Matthew 27 and 18, for he knew, Pontius, Pontius Pilate, right? He knew that for envy they had delivered him. Let's read that in the NLT. Uh, Matthew 27 and 18. He knew, 
very well that the religious leaders had arrested Yahushai out of envy. See? See? Just then, the 19th verse in the NLT, Matthew 27, just then as Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent him this message, leave that innocent man alone. I suffered through a terrible nightmare about him last night. Wow. <laughs> Meanwhile, the leading priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas to be released and for Yahushua to be put to death. And it was set up in the spirit anyway for Yahushua to be put to death and then raised up after the third day, going into the fourth day, raised up out of the tomb. It was all prophecy. So Yahushua had to sacrifice himself on the cross because it was according to Bible prophecy. Yahushua himself said, uh, not one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass till all be fulfilled, which includes his, which included his own death and then resurrection. Okay? So there you go. So, um, yeah, so we made the point. So let's just go to John the 8th chapter. Like I said, I'm going to see how far I'll get in uh, in uh, going it, going through this. John 8 and 21. Then said Yahweh again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whither I go, ye cannot come. See? So that takes me back to what I said. You know, uh, the sins of Israel can only be can only be forgiven through Yahweh Shai. There's a scripture where where um, where um, the wicked Pharisees had made a statement. Who is this man that says he can forgive sins? Let me see if I can find that scripture. Who is this? That says he has the power to forgive sins. That says he has the power to forgive. And uh, when the wicked Pharisees and Sadducees heard <clears throat> heard Yahweh Shai said that with such authority that he's the one that the Father set up to forgive sins. Oh, they lost it, man. They said, well, they basically they're saying, what, are you, are you greater than the law? Which the Heavenly Father gave us for the forgiveness of sin? Yeah, this might be it. Matthew 9 and 6. Let's go there. Matthew 9 and 6. Now look at the subheading. A, a paralytic, a paralytic, a paralytic, a paralytic healed. Let's start with the first verse. And he entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city which would be what? Nazareth. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Yahweh I seen that faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. It shows you we receive diseases and whatnot because of our sins. That's why we're sick. And behold, certain of the scribes, see, now this time, is the scribes. Remember, you had the wicked Pharisees, the wicked scribes, the wicked Sadducees, the, the wicked lawyers. Many of them had a problem with Yahweh Shai. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, this man blasphemeth. See? And Yahweh Shai, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether is easier to say, 
thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise and walk. What they didn't realize is these scribes that Yahweh Shai was the one, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh set up to forgive sins. Yahweh Shai really, Yahweh Shai was the law and is the law personified, man. The same way the law has the power to forgive sins, you follow the law. If you commit a sin, you do what the law says to do. Yahweh Shai became that. That um, uh, Yahweh Shai became that, for lack of a better word, ritual for, for your sins to be forgiven. In other words, you got to pray to Yahweh Shai. You got to worship Yahweh Shai. You got to go through him to have your sins be forgiven. And like I said, to this very day, you got certain Israelites that ain't trying to hear that. Hear that. They're the same ones back then that had a problem with Yahweh Shai. Matthew 9 and 5. For whether is, whether, whether is easier to say, thy sins be forgiven thee, or say, arise and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man, here it is, here it is right there. But that you may know that the Son of Man, that's Yahweh Shai, have power on earth to forgive sins. See? Before that was the law. So when the wicked Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes heard that, they lost it, man. They, they were like, what? You know? <laughs> but that ye may know that the Son of Man have power on earth to forgive sins. Then said he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go into thine house. And he arose and departed to his house. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified the Heavenly Father, which had given such power unto men. Yeah, Yahweh Shai was that guy. Yahweh Shai is that guy. Can you see why later Yahweh Shai was arrested and brought to trial? Because of envy. Remember, we read that scripture? Well, it was because of moments like that, when Yahweh Shai healed that, that sick man and, and told him, arise and walk, your sins are forgiven. He was sick, that, that man was sick because of his sins. Yahweh Shai had the power to forgive sins. Okay? So the Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes, they didn't like that. Because part of their power was they were boasting in the law, all about the law. If you want to have your sins be forgiven, you got to do what I tell you. I represent the law. So Yahweh Shai kind of took that power away from them. He became the one who, who had the power to forgive sins. And the wicked Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes, they didn't like that. And they became jealous of him. They became envious of him. So much so, so much to the point where they delivered him to be crucified. And Pilate picked it up in the spirit. We just read that scripture. Pilate said, well, he didn't say, he, he perceived for envy that had brought Yahweh Shai to be crucified. And then his wife, Pilate's wife, said, you better watch how you deal with that man. Because I, I suffered many things in a nightmare because of that man, Yahweh Shai. Okay? So there you go. So going back to J John the 8th chapter, the 21st verse. So now you begin to understand why this is said in John the 8th chapter. Then said Yahweh Shai again unto them, I go my way and ye shall seek me and shall die in your sins. Now you understand why. Because they didn't want to accept him as being the Savior. Yahweh Shai. They didn't want to accept him as being the one who forgives sins. Whether, whither I go, ye cannot come. Then said the Jews, will he kill himself? Yeah, like over here in the NLT it says, the people ask, is he planning to commit suicide? What does he mean, you cannot come where I am going? Right? So, they, <laughs> they didn't understand Yahweh Shai's words. Yahweh Shai, when he would speak, he would speak in um, spiritually. You know, uh, in other words, he would um, he would speak in parables. There's a scripture in in, in, in the book of uh, Psalms, right? The book of Psalms, the 49th chapter, where it was already prophesied Yahweh Shai would come come on the scene and and speak in parables. Psalm 49 and. Uh, Psalm 49 and 3, my mouth shall speak of wisdom, and this starts with Yahweh Shai, and the meditation of my heart shall be of understanding. I will incline mine ear to a parable. I will open my, I will open my dark saying upon the harp. See? 
So that was um, that was a, a, a prophecy of when Yahweh Shai would come on the scene. I think there's um, I think uh, that was uh, quoted too. I think it might have been by Apostle Paul. He will speak in parables. Let's see. Yeah, here it is right here. Matthew 13 and 35. The book of Matthew. 13. Look at the subheading. Yahweh Shai teaches in parables. Matthew 13 and 35. And that was a fulfillment of uh, Psalm 49, which that was King David who said that in the spirit. But King David was really prophesying about Yahweh Shai in the spirit, something that Yahweh Shai would do when he came on the scene. Matthew 13 and 34. All these things spake Yahweh Shai unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spake he not, not unto them. Again, that's why in John 8, when he said what he said, the, the people didn't understand. They said, is he going to commit suicide? Is he going to kill himself? Because Yahweh Shai was known to speak in dark sayings and parables. And it was only given to the elect of Yahweh Shai to understand what he was really saying. Even, hell, there was one parable Yahweh Shai said, and not even the, uh, uh, the disciples which became apostles understood what he said. And he had to take them aside and explain to them what he meant by what he said. There's, a, there's an example of that in Scripture. You know, you had the 70 elders when Yahweh Shai said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. And they thought he was talking about cannibalism, and they stopped following him. You know, that's in the scripture. So, Matthew 13 and 34, all these things spake Yahweh Shai unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. See? I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. There you go. And we just read that as a quote from uh, Psalm, the 49th chapter, which it was King David who said that, but he was prophesying about Yahweh Shai. And that shows you right there that if Yahweh Shai was meant to be understood by the world, why would he have to speak in parables? So going back to John the 8th chapter, the 21st verse again, Then said Yahweh Shai again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whither I go, ye cannot come. So that, that was like a parable. That was a parable, basically. Then said the Jews, will he kill himself? Because he saith, whither I go, ye cannot come. Then Yahweh Shai proceeds to say, and, and again, this is at the camp. If you watch the camp Saturday, uh, we... I'm, this is the what I had quoted, this verse here, and Apostle Ta, you know, like I said, he jumped on it, and he said what he said. You'd have to watch the video. And then he said that uh, I should do, he said he was going to do it, a video on John the 8th chapter. And then he said, oh, you, you should do it, brother. And uh, maybe I'll, he said, maybe I'll post it on his channel, something like that, he said. So here I am through the spirit to do it, you know, but I'm not going to do the whole chapter, there's too many verses, the video would be long as hell, I'm just going to focus on what I had said at the camp, hopefully bring some more understanding to it, hopefully edify you brothers out there, and uh, your sisters that believe in this, this, this truth, you know, that's what this video is all about, so John 8 and 23, and he said unto them, ye are from beneath, I am from above, right, so what does that mean? You are from beneath. Meaning, basically, how I would say, you, you are beneath me. You, 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 there's many things you can unpack from that statement. You're, you're beneath me. Um, I'm above you. In understanding, that is. You're beneath me in understanding. I'm above you in understanding. You, you can't comprehend 
what I said because it wasn't given to you to comprehend what I said. There's a lot that we can extrapolate from that statement Yahweh Shai made there. And who was he talking to? He was talking to the Jews, basically. He was talking, which among them was wicked Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes, you know. So he made that statement. He's, and he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye, ye are of this world, I am not of this world. So that's a clue for us right now. Yahweh Shai is, you know, he's not of this world. Okay, and we're not of this world. You know, you can bring in the scripture, love not the world, neither the things that are of this world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The Apostle Paul said it beautifully when he said, he said, uh, 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 using this world, but not abusing it. The Apostle Paul said that, you know, we're in the world, but we're not of this world, meaning we're not trying to build uh we're not trying to build um, so-called happiness in this world. We're not trying to build a life in this world. Because as, as it is written, again, the Apostle Paul said, for the fashion of this world shall pass away. We're looking forward to a, a, a new world. Second Peter 3 and 13. As a matter of fact, let's get that real quick. That's what it means we're not of this world. So we really don't care about this this society. We'd be happy as hell if this society would be destroyed <coughs> today. Hell, <laughs> which is not going to happen. There's, there's still prophecies that got to be fulfilled before this society is destroyed. But we, the point is, we'd be happy as hell if this society were to be destroyed today. As I'm making this video, because our heart is not into this world. That's the point. Let me show you the world that our heart is into. 2 Peter 3 and 13. Well, let's look at 12. 2 Peter 3 and 12. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the Heavenly Father, which is the day of Yahweh Shai, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, as with the missiles and the chariots, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Again, that's the missiles causing a, a lake of fire, especially this place called America be destroyed, totally destroyed. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, see, look for new heavens and a new earth. So we're not of this world. We're looking for a new heavens and a new earth. New, the word new in the Greek is kainos, which means refreshed. So it's the same earth, different new heavens mean a new rulership, which is going to be the rulership of uh, the Israelites, beginning with Yahweh Shai and then King David. You know, the Israelites are going to be ruling in righteousness. That's what it means by new heavens. Plus, the earth is going to be rejuvenated. That's what it means by new earth. You know, the water is going to be cleansed. The air is going to be cleansed. All that plastic, all, all the filth that Esau has done to this planet earth will be cleansed. All that filth will be done away with, including Esau and his rulership. You know, he's going to be brought into slavery. And after a period of time, they're going to be rounded up. According to the scriptures, is about what a uh, thousand years. Because Elder Pastor had made a statement. He said, "He said it doesn't necessarily say a thousand years. After a thousand years, Esau is going to be rounded up and be destroyed. But again, it's be a period of time. We have to wait and see. Right, period of time. Uh, Esau is going to serve us in captivity. You know." For all intents and purposes, we teach a thousand years. And uh, after that period of time, pursuant to Obadiah 1 and 18, Esau is going to be rounded up and, and set on fire, be destroyed. The scripture that backs that up is what Job said. Job said, the eye that see him shall see him no more. Who's he talking about? Esau, the Edomites. Okay, they're going to be done away with. All right, so... 2 Peter 3 and 13, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. So our heart is not in this world because Job 9 and 24, the scriptures say the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. This world is being ruled in wickedness. So, of course, our heart is not into this world. Like the Apostle Paul said, using the world but not abusing it. For you, for you, do, for you to abuse this world, that means you, you'd have to go totally into wickedness. If you want to be a success in this world, you just have to be totally wicked. Give yourself over to wickedness. 
okay, for you to be a success in this world. So those of us that have been calling this knowledge is truth, we understand that. So we have removed ourselves to a certain extent from this world, mentally that is. We're, we're more concerned with the future world, which is what Yahweh Shai is bringing, the world of righteousness, like I just read here. 2 Peter 3 and 13, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. And it's, it's almost at the door, man. Almost at the door. You see all these prophecies jumping off. Uh, it was El Apostol named this year, the year of the prophecies. Uh, I, I forgot exactly how he said it. Something to do with to be fulfilled. The fulfillment of the prophecy, the year of fulfillment of the prophecies, something like that. He had said, I don't remember exactly how he said it at this moment, but the point is you see all these prophecies in the scriptures, look, the major prophecies of what's going on over there in Israel. Okay. That's going to lead to what? That's going to lead to uh, World War III because it's going to be over Israel. Remember, World War III is going to happen over Israel. You know, the, the Russians are going to finally invade Israel and shoot missiles on that place. And that's going to precipitate America to get in the mix because America is a god to, to Israel, the state of Israel. And there you have it, World War Three. Okay, so, but before that happens, like Elder Pastor always says, the uh, uh, prophecy in Revelation 13, 16 must come to pass. And what is that? That is the mandatory implantation of that CHIP, that chip. Okay, which is the RFID uh, microchip, the mandatory implantation of that thing by ESO. That prophecy has to have to come to pass before World War Three breaks out. All right, so I'm get ready to wrap this video up. John eight and twenty three, and he, and he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. So now you know what that means. 24 verse, I say therefore unto you that you shall die in your sins. So now you know what that means. Because Yahweh Shai was the one set up to forgive sins. And I gave you some examples. And he was set up by the Father. As a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul says in 1 Timothy 2 and 5 that Yahweh Shai is the mediator between us and the Heavenly Father. See, right here. 1 Timothy 2 and 5, for there is one power and one mediator. So the mediator is the one that has the power to, for, to forgive our sins. Who's that? Yahweh Shai. He's the mediator. Just like in the past, Moses was the mediator. You had to go to Moses to get, you know, Moses represented the law. The law was given to him. If you sinned, you had, you had to go to uh, Moses. And Moses would pray for the Israelites and, you know, uh, you know, his, his brother Aaron was the high priest, you know. As a matter of fact, the priesthood came from Aaron, his brother. See, so it was Moses and Aaron. They were like the mediators of, of our nation. Well, Yahweh Shai became a better mediator, okay. First uh, Timothy 2 and 5, for there is one power and one mediator between the heavenly father and men, the man Yahweh Shai. See, if we look up this word mediator. And that's what the wicked Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes, that's what they didn't want to accept. They did not want to accept that. And that's why Yahweh Shai said, you shall die in your sins. And not just them, the Jews, the, the, the ordinary Jews that didn't believe in Yahweh Shai, weren't chosen to be one of his elect. They had a problem with him saying that he's the one that is set up to forgive sins. And that's why he made that statement, you shall die in your sins. They can try to keep the law all they want to, but they didn't realize it's not the law that's going to deliver you or make you perfect. It's Yahweh Shai. He's, he is the Savior. He's the salvation. Here's the Greek word for mediator. Strong's G3316. Mesites. Mesites. And what does it say? It says... One who intervenes between two, who would that two be? Us and the Heavenly Father. Either in order to make or restore peace and friendship, see? And Yahweh Shai didn't do that for the whole world. 
He did that only for the nation of Israel. That's why he, one of his titles was, and we said that at the camp Saturday, one of his titles was uh, the Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace, because he made peace between us and the Heavenly Father. So now, through Yahweh Shai, once again, we are the Lord's chosen people. The special people that it speaks about in Deuteronomy 7 and 6. And thanks to Yahweh Shai, who, for sacrificing himself on the cross, he made us a special people once again to the Lord, to the Heavenly Father. So you see the great work that Yahweh Shai did, man? And you had plenty of Israelites that didn't want to accept him. Ungrateful. You want to talk about being ungrateful. <laughs> That's why when Yahweh Shai comes back this time, he's going to destroy many of them, man. Many of them are on his hit list. Uh, again, Isaiah 66 and 15, for the slain of the Lord shall be many. Can you understand why? Because they're ungrateful. Okay? For the great work that Yahweh Shai did, they're ungrateful. Hey, we thank Yahweh Shem Shai that we're not in that ilk. You know, that we understand what Yahweh Shai did, and we're very grateful for what he did. And we have no trouble worshiping Yahweh Shai and praying to Yahweh Shai, okay? Because he indeed is our Savior. Again, one who intervenes between two, either in order to make or restore peace and friendship, or form a compact, or for ratifying a covenant, right? A medium, a medium of communication, an arbitrator, an arbitrator, which is like a go-between, okay, an intercessor, all right, that's Yahweh Shai, see, a go-between, I didn't even know he was going to say that, a go-between, i.e., i.e. is in Latin means example given, simply an inter, internunciator, internunciator, a reconciler, intercessor that's Yahweh Shai man and like I said the wicked Pharisees Sadducees and scribes they had a problem with that with Yahweh Shai being that man even though a lot of them knew he was that guy but remember the scriptures say you learned that today that one of the reasons they brought Yahweh Shai to be crucified was for envy they they just, they were just jealous of him because he had that position the father gave him that position like a lot of these guys out there Beginning of Elder Pastor and down, they're jealous of us. You know, they're jealous of Elder Pastor, they're jealous of my, myself, jealous of Elder Pastor Rama, you know, Elder Pastor Rakar. They know deep within their heart of hearts, the Lord got to be dealing with us. But jealousy, just like they had for Yahweh Shai. Remember, Yahweh Shai said, uh, the, the servant is not greater than his master. Right? So we're not greater than Yahweh Shai. So if they had envy for him, they're, they're going to have envy for us as well. But it's really not us. It's Yahweh Shai that's being formed in us. You know, Yahweh Shai made a statement. He said, they can't hate you. It's me that they hate. Yahweh Shai said that. And that's true. Back to John 8 and 24. I said, therefore unto you that you shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, see, ye shall die in your sins. And pretty much that's the theme of John the 8th chapter. That's why I don't have to really do the whole chapter to break it down. That's pretty much the theme. They didn't believe that he was the guy. They didn't believe that he was set up to be the salvation of the nation of Israel. The day I'm talking about, the wicked Pharisees, wicked Sadducees, scribes, lawyers, and many of the Jews. They didn't believe. And you know why they didn't believe? Because it wasn't given to them to believe. Okay? It wasn't given to them by the Heavenly Father Yahweh to believe in the only begotten Son. Because the elect that the Heavenly Father gave to Yahweh Shai, they believed. Because it was given to them to believe. And we hope, and we believe that we're of that ilk, that group. Because we believe in Yahweh Shai. Okay? John 8 and 20, uh, 24, I said, Therefore unto you that you shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. And then as you read John, the 8th chapter is going back and forth. You know what the Lord said about the Israelites, that they're disobedient and gainsaying people. So there's this going back and forth, back and forth within John, the 8th chapter. Right? Let's keep reading. It says, Then said they unto him, Who art thou? See? So, 
That's why I was trying to say, look, you from beneath. I'm from above. In other words, you can't understand what I'm saying. You, it's a waste of time talking to you. You below me. You're beneath me. Ah, that's what Yahweh was saying, basically. Then said they unto, unto him, Who art thou? Who are you? <laughs> and Yahweh said unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. See? I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true. Who's that? The Heavenly Father Yahweh sent him. And I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. Yeah. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. See, they, they, they just didn't have no understanding. Like he said, you are beneath me. I'm above. And, and, and we, we got examples of that today. Individuals, man, that, that they're so beneath us that we don't have time to condescend to them. It would be a waste of time. And that's what we were talking about at the camp yesterday, Saturday. All right. You have to go and watch the video to hear, you know, what we said. 28 verse. Then said, Yahweh shall unto them, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall you know that I am He and that I do nothing of myself. And that is so true. We can, we can testify to that, man. Those of us that know this knowledge is truth, we can testify to what Yahweh Shai just said there. It's so true what he said. When you have lifted up the Son of Man, how do you do that? By getting into this knowledge, this truth, and by praising Yahweh Shai. You understand why he did what he did. You understand who he is, Yahweh Shai. Right? That's an example of us lifting him up. Then you shall know that I am he, see? And that I do nothing of myself. Exactly. All the power Yahweh Shai had, he got it from his father, Yahweh. And another thing too, every time Yahweh Shai did a miracle... He never boasted in that. He always gave the credit to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, always. Okay? So like he said here, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. See? And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. As he spake these words, many believed on him. See? Many believed on him. And why did they believe on him? Because they were part of his elect. And those same spirits are back today. And they're going to receive the their, their reward for believing in Yahweh Shai. That's why they believed in him. Because they were part of the elect. His elect. When Yahweh Shai comes back, who's he going to gather, huh? Matthew 24 and 30. His elect. The ones that were chosen to believe on him. Then Yahweh Shai said to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, those same spirits are back today. If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. All right? But then you had many that didn't believe in him. The scripture said many believed on him, but in comparison to the many that didn't believe in him, that many seems like a few, even though it said many believed on him. Because many more didn't. And those were the ones Yahweh Shai was wrestling back and forth in the book of John, the 8th chapter. All right, so I'm going to end it there. Like I said, if you want, if there's a project for you brothers out there, if you want to take on the whole chapter, you know, uh, please be my guest. But again, Elder Pastor said it'd be a good chapter to do a lesson. And he even might do a lesson on John, the 8th chapter, see how the Spirit moves him to do it. But he did say that at the camp. So... Hopefully you were edified and it's on to the next one.